As South Africa's biggest financial union is threatening to disrupt the country's banking industry by leading its 73,000 members on a strike next month in what will be its largest industrial action in almost a century. Well, let's get a sense of what this is all about from our South Africa business correspondent, Itumeleng Mafisa. Hello, Itumeleng. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. 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 So why is the union threatening to shut down the banking industry? What are the issues? Well, we've got lots of issues tabled here. I mean, uh, what we've seen is that you, uh, the banks have served workers with uh, Section 189s, which are notices basically to, to uh, lay off workers. So what unions are saying is that we're expecting around 10,000 workers uh, to be laid off before the end of the year. Uh, but uh, it seems like talks have been going on, although uh, unions are saying that the employer has not been honest with them. Now, are there particular banks being targeted, or uh, this has to do with all the banks? Well, this is all the banks, uh, well, major banks in South Africa, including EFSA, NetBank, Standard Bank, and uh, Old Mutual, which is the uh, biggest supply of financial services in this country. Uh, what unions are saying is that we've seen uh, the CEOs of these entities earning exorbitant amounts of money, uh, but still uh, continuing with plans to lay off workers. So how are the banks and, of course, the regulator, the Reserve Bank, responding to, to this? Well, uh, the banks are responding to this, of course, uh, by engaging with more talks with unions, although this is not resulting in uh, you know, fruitfulness since unions are saying that uh, they are about to consult the South African Communist Party and they are seeking the backing of other trade unions and uh, small unions in what will be the biggest strike uh, in the financial sector this country. What they're talking about is a complete shutdown of the financial services next month. So what is the position of the presidency in all of these, as, even as unemployment rate keeps rising? Well, the president, as we know it, uh, during his State of the Nation address earlier, called for a job summit where we can talk about uh, what is happening with jobs in this country. Obviously, around 10 million people are unemployed in this country, but uh, what the president is saying, we need more solutions, and he's talking about uh, companies creating more jobs so, of course, uh, with uh, the banks uh, in noticing or informing people that they'll be laid off, it's actually a blow to what the president has had to, to, to plan. Um, you know, he already in this country is under attack on many bases, uh, you know, from the ANC side, including uh, the report from the public protector. So the president of the country at this point has a lot to deal with. Now, do you, uh, all of these issues happening in the banking sector having any impact on the banking index of the equities market? Well, of course, what is happening in the banking sector uh, is having impact on the banking index. Uh, but what is actually, uh, you know, happening is that we're seeing that the RAND is holding steady, although under pressure. Uh, we're looking at it uh, aiming at the 15 RAND mark. But uh, seeing that, obviously, this is also pressure from what is happening uh, between China and the U.S. Uh, but we are going to see uh, more results from what is going on in the banking sector uh, in the next few days. What we're seeing right now is threats of a complete shutdown and talks. All right. Thank you for your time, Itumaleng Mafisa. And for Nigerian equities market updates, let's cross over now to the trading floor where Eddie Dion Ewang is all set to update us. Hello, Eddie. Good afternoon. So where is the market at the moment? Hello, Chimese. Well, right now we are negative. You know, the market is down about 0.05% with about 97 million shares traded, all less than a billion naira. You know, we've seen um, four sectors posting losses so far. Insurance is down by 2.6%. Banking is down 0.24%. Consumer goods and oil and, and industrial goods, I beg your pardon, are also down 0.08%. So right now, only the oil and gas sector is up by 0.24%. So we'll see how that you know, plays out 
before, by, you know, by the end of trading today. Right now, FBNH is the top gate, like it's the most traded stock with about 27 million shares traded. And then on the gainers list, we have corn oil posting 6.33 percent, you know, higher. And Dangote Flower, while Flower Mill, Zenith Bank, and Continental Insurance are the top three losers at this time. So let's see how things go, and you know, we hope for a good day today. Hoping for a better day. Anyway, this is midweek. What is the outlook for the remaining two trading days? Well, we really shouldn't expect, you know, anything other than a bearish trend. Right now, we have the um, Salah holidays coming up, and that doesn't mm -hmm. post, you know, any positive news for investors. Um, President Buhari has said he's going to swear in his ministers on the 21st of August. So people have delayed their investment. So we're not likely to see any positive catalyst until the cabinet is inaugurated and the ministers start to work. But with these low prices, you know, this is actually the time to take position in the market, Chimizi. So you and I will probably take up that advantage, Eddie. Thank you for this update. Enjoy the day. All right, we'll move on now. Zimbabwe is seeking $331.5 million in humanitarian uh, aid as the southern African nation battles the twin shocks of a sustained drought and a cyclone earlier this year. U.S. Ambassador to Zimbabwe, Brian Nicole, said his country would provide an additional $45 million in food and cash transfers for those affected by hunger. Local government minister Julie Moyo earlier said the country needs one million metric tons of corn after adverse weather slashed its harvest. The corn crop is expected to plummet 54% this year amid the drought and after cyclone Ida damaged crops in some provinces in March. And Glencore PLC is planning to halt production at one of the world's biggest cobalt mines after prices for the battery metal collapsed and costs at the project increased. The announcement that Glencore will close its Mutanda mine in the Democratic Republic of Congo is expected to come as the company lays out an overhaul of its key Africa copper and cobalt business when it releases first half results later today. It will be another setback for Glencoe, which has been docked by operational problems, legal challenges, and a rift with Congo's government over a new mining code. And global oil market prices slipped further today, extending recent heavy losses as deepening sino U.S. strict tensions weighed on the outlook for the global economy and energy demand. Brent crude futures were down 11 cents to set a fresh seven-month low. Prices have lost more than 20 percent since hitting their 2019 peak in April. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were flat at $53.63. Brent prices have plunged more than 9 percent over the past week after U.S. President Donald Trump said he would slap a 10 percent tariff on a further $300 billion in Chinese imports from September 1, sending global equity markets into a tailspin. And that's a wrap on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago.